Hi everyone, I'm Nerdy Fool, and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Apologies for being gone for the past few weeks. Uh, I had real life stuff going on, but I should be back to my usual weekly cadence. So, quick recap because it's been a while. Where we ended up last session, uh, we had been dealing with the starvation of our colony and finally managed to get enough food to deal with that and then glow hit. And with the glow season, we were attacked as we seem to be every glow, which led to several deaths, including we got attacked by a new creature, a giant creature called a Faceless, that ended up destroying our ship, destroying our uh, greenhouses and such, and uh, killed off Calm, Anemone's older brother, and uh, several other people, including Governor Uticott, was killed, not by the Faceless, but just in the glow attack. And so we're left sort of struggling and trying to figure out how we're going to survive now that we are even farther back than we've been before. So let's go around and talk to people. Mars crosses our arms and sulks. What's the point of having all these kudos if I can't actually use them to, like, buy stuff we need? Like, hello? It's not like I can mail order more supplies through the wormhole. Wow. People just died and you care about buying fashion and stuff. Tangent frowns. I don't understand, she says. Why now? Why does it keep getting worse? So this is where the living quarters used to be, and they're gone now. And this is Command. It's gone. Like the other people in Geoponics, your dad has been working day and night to salvage what he can after the attack. It's gonna be okay, he promises. We just need to work hard. Yeah, glad you could be here, Super Monkey. Cal puts on a brave smile. We have a lot to be thankful for, he says. We're still alive. That has to count for something, right? Your mom looks overdrawn with lack of sleep. Be careful out there, she says wearily. Don't want anything to happen to you too. And Dis? Dis is examining a bit of rubble, turning it over in his hands. I wonder if we're ever gonna find like alien tech, he says. Wouldn't that be cool? So we can't go out on expeditions because the wall and the gate are destroyed. So, the only thing we can do is head here into engineering the last remaining piece of our ship. Engineering is crammed with families and what belongings they've salvaged from the destroyed living quarters. You could spend time in the crowded temporary lodgings in the classroom, or help the adults try to fix things. So, we could mourn, which is our current, uh, renewing our stress option. We are in mourning, because a lot of people died. Or, we can attempt to help rebuild, gaining toughness, organization, and some kudos. Since our stress is perfect, I think we will help out with the rebuilding effort. The first month of quiet passes, each day plotting one after the other. You still have trouble sleeping in the classroom barracks, but there's nowhere else to go. Every day you wake with the others and try to make the best of it. Grief and anger come in waves, not just for you, but for everyone. Some days are better than others. You're assigned to help rebuild the walls. The first part of the month is spent just dragging away the wreckage and sorting it into salvage or recycling. By the time that's done, crews assembling, disassembling parts of the stratospheric have delivered enough salvage that you can begin work patching up the walls. A sense of urgency permeates the crew. After everything, people need to feel safe. This is on the work crew with you, something he does begrudgingly. Walls didn't help the first time, he grumbles, whenever anyone asks his opinion. We should just tear them all down and live like the animals do. If someone planted a bunch of buildings on my land, I'd be pissed off too. Uh, we're gonna work hard. I agree to some extent with this, but I also recognize that if we tear down the walls, that's probably not gonna make everything peaceful, suddenly. Uh, by the end of the month, you've made noticeable progress. There are other priorities and not a lot of construction material, but when last year's mushwood harvest is done drying out, you'll be able to do more. Even if Dis is right, 
that it didn't help the first time, it's better than nothing. All right. So we are getting bonuses to straights and plus five kudos if we equal the goal of 29 or whatever the super goal ends up being. So we could do, oh, that's not actually gonna end up being a three. It's one of those that grows. So we can't really do a five, four, three. So maybe five, five, I was gonna say four, 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 but whatever. So that doesn't get us to the super goal. And what does this end up being? Another five, nifty. 34, 34, perfect. So we'll get the extra five kudos. Uh, so we gain six toughness, which is awesome, and a bit of organizing, and some kudos. The sun's finally dawn again on your birthday. You wake early and climb to the top of engineering to watch the first sun's watery rays break the horizon as the wormhole recedes across the sky. Dawn should represent hope for... Dawn should represent hope after a long period of darkness, but this light only reveals the full extent of the damage to the colony. You've been having trouble sleeping, like most people. It's hard to find rest. Crammed into the classroom with all the other kids and their families, and every time you close your eyes, you see... You shake your head to clear the memories. You pull your blanket more tightly around your shoulders. Not your blanket, that one's gone. And stare out at the sun. Uh, as the sun rises on the horizon, meager and sickly. Hey, kiddo. You hear, then your mom comes and sits down beside you. Thought I'd find you here. You both sit in silence for a while, watching the sunrise pick out all the broken glass littering the fields, glimmering like a field of stars. After a few minutes, your mom nudges you with her elbow. So, she says, your first apocalypse, huh? She huffs, smiling self-deprecatingly. First one's always the hardest, she sighs. When the first colony was attacked back on Earth, I thought that was it. Everything my parents told me about, the power of community, all that, thought they were full of crap too. She turns and gives you a serious look. It's okay to be sad right now, and mad too. I'm mad as hell. I want to get out there and rip every goddamn mushroom out of the ground. And that's keeping me going, for now. But that's not going to be forever, Selene, she continues. Eventually, the sadness and rage is going to cool, and you have to figure out how to feel after that. She points at your chest. Hope lives here, she says. It's the human condition. We just don't know when to give up. Your mom squints out into the sunrise. I had to figure out how to have hope, too. I needed it to get on that uh, busted-up spaceship with your dad and launch myself through a wormhole. Hope is why we had you. She smiles. Things work out in unusual ways, Selene. It just takes time. You watch the sunrise together for a few minutes. After a bit, your mom pulls out a little box tied with a piece of gardening fine. From your father and I, she says. Happy birthday, kiddo. You know what it is before you open it. Your old medallion, the one your dad made with the sun on it to represent Earth, was broken during the attack. In all the chaos, you didn't even notice, but your parents did, and made you a new one. It's just like you remembered. A similar design with a wormhole this time to represent Vertumna, giving plus five challenges rather than the plus one the previous one had. You thank her and squint out at the swirling wormhole, still barely visible in the brightening sky. It's so massive and awe-inspiring this time of year, but it always seems to herald disaster. You're happy to watch it fade away into the daylight. Your mom lets out a dark chuckle and slaps you on the back. What a birthday. Here's to another one, right? You both head back downstairs to the wreckage of the canteen, where they put up temporary roofing with whatever tarps and scraps could be found. The colony nanoprinters, the few that still run, have been working day and night to replace the necessities of life, but larger construction projects are going to take some time. Aunt Anne has coaxed the kitchen nanoprinters into making soy gruel and pressed bars, life-sustaining but depressing, you and the other colonists eat your breakfast in stony silence as you mentally prepare for the day. Chief Administrator Seek has taken over as interim governor now the council, uh, n until the council can elect someone new. Last week, they held a mass funeral for everyone who died. There's talk of turning the stratosphere stratospheric's destroyed front half into a memorial shrine after everything useful has been salvaged. There's still so much to do.
So Super Monkey, have you played the game yourself? Or have you just watched playthroughs? Ooh, a new perk. So we got our toughness up to the perk level. Red cards will gain a plus one in physical challenges. So all physical challenges will get plus ones on all of our red cards, which is pretty cool. Tangent Pace is outside the engineering wing. The only building still standing. With everyone living in here, there's barely enough room to think. This wretched planet, Mars grumbles, gazing at the wreckage of the stratosphere. That was my ship. <laughs> well, you should give it a shot, Steve Monkey. It's a great game. Uh, I would recommend playing it and trying different options to see what sort of direction the game will go. It's going to be OK, your dad says. You'll see, kiddo. Papa can fix this. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, maybe the new colony can have a hoverboard park, Cal says, putting on a brave smile. That'd be pretty cool, right? Can't believe it's all gone, your mom mutters. All that work, gone in one night. This is sitting on a pile of rubble, looking out over the colony wreckage. He doesn't look particularly sad. What do you want? Looks like, again, nothing much we can do besides head back into engineering and mourn or rebuild. So we're going to rebuild again. You're signed to help out in geoponics. The agriculturists. Agriculturalists. Agriculturists. There we go. There's not an extra L there. Have been hard at work trying to salvage what they can of the ruined field and destroyed greenhouses. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Your mom is in fine form in her role as chief cultivator. She'd never admit it, but managing a crisis is what she's made for. Cal's working in geoponics too, of course. He smiles when he sees you. Hey, Selene. There's lots of stuff to do. What do you want to work on? Repair the greenhouses, work in the fields, or rebuild the animal pens? Um... I think the fields are where we're going to get the most crops. And food has got to be... Tough again, so probably work in the fields. You and Cal are set to work in the fields. Luckily, they were mostly empty during glow, but quiet is supposed to be a season of planting. With the deep compacted trenches where the massive faceless stomped all over the colony, defenders, the fields are in worse shape than when you landed. You're set, uh, you're set the task of aerating the soil. You and Cal trade off, one of you guiding a bot with a dangerous looking aeration extension, while the other uses a shovel and sometimes a pickaxe to loosen the soil and dig out pieces of debris. Then there's the spark snow. It will raise the soil acidity if it sits long enough to melt, and your earth crops hate that. When you're not aerating the soil, you're trying to keep it from piling up. There are tarps laid out over the fields, but shoveling the snow from the tarps is backbreaking work too. It's exhausting. Everyone is worried that this will be the final nail in the coffin, for your food supply after the famine last year. You try not to think about it too hard, instead focusing on just doing what you can to help rebuild. We get a plus one to red cards and five kudos if the total equals the goal. I think we're already getting an additional plus one for toughness, so that's pretty cool. Uh, six, five, four. I don't have a two, which is disappointing. <laughs> oh well. What's that minus one from? Under, from under the hot sun. Oh, minus one to physical challenges. I didn't even notice that. I should read the cards more. Um, we'll just toss a five in there. Uh, it'd be nice to get. The extra kudos, but I'm not going to fight it overly much. Oh, you watched from back uh, with Frostpunk. Yeah, I'm super excited for when the sequel comes out. I think next year. I will definitely be playing that when it comes out. Frostpunk is a great game. You're eating in the mess tents when you hear something rumbling. 
Your bowl and cutlery start rattling. People look around in alarm. Could it be another attack? So soon? You begin to hear shouting from outside. Someone runs into the tent. There's something falling from the sky, they shout. It's on fire. You join the crowd of people leaving your temporary structures to gather in the colony square. People are squinting up into the milky, quiet sunlight, pointing and gesturing wildly. It's impossible to miss the thing hurling towards you from space, like a great big ball of fire coming straight for you. Is this it? Is this the end? After all you've been through, a meteor's gonna land in the middle of your already ruined colony and kill you all? Mars grabs your shoulder. It's another ship, she exclaims. Look, look, it's another spaceship from Earth. Excitement ripples through the crowd. Could it be? You stare up, unbelieving, at the rapidly approaching ship. The flames of its entry into the atmosphere dissipate, but a thick column of greasy black smoke trails behind it. Soon you can hear the whistle of it rippling, ripping through the atmosphere at terminal velocity. It's coming right at us. That is not a controlled descent, or whoa. Uh, that is not a controlled descent. It's an enormous ship coming at you way too fast. The ship's reverse thrusters fire, trying to slow it down so it doesn't smash into a billion pieces when it hits the planet. Everyone scatters to take cover. You crouch behind some rocks, throw your arms over your head, and squeeze your eyes shut. You hear the massive spaceship touch down in geoponics, plowing through the fields and grinding over what was left of the greenhouses. You throw, you're thrown to the ground from the force of the impact as shrapnel and small rocks zing past your head. It grinds along like some roaring monster, cutting a great scar through the colony and kicking up an enormous cloud of dust. We just repaired the fields, come on. Finally, the ship comes to a creaking, shuddering halt. You and the other colonists carefully crawl out of your hiding places, coughing and rubbing your eyes. The new ship is half buried and obscured by dust, but you can tell it's from Earth. You squint and make out stenciled letters, Heliopause. A hatch opens in its side, and silhouettes begin to emerge. Silhouettes with guns. Soldiers march out of the dust and quickly surround all of the remaining colonists. More soldiers form two parallel lines from the ship to the square, their guns in, in parade rest, and a lone figure strides down the center toward you. Greetings, fugitives of Earth, the man says, spreading his hands wide. A dismayed murmur ripples through the crowd. The adults exchange significant looks. Chief Engineer Instance tries to slip out of the crowd, but she's stopped by the line of soldiers. And the man smiles. He has a broad, easy-going smile that doesn't match the threatening aura of the soldiers, nor the smoking ruin of the ship behind him. I am Commander Lum, he says proudly. As Captain of the Heliopause, I've come to render aid and bring you to justice. I'll listen with the others. I want to hear what he has to say. Seek steps forward out of the crowd. You're not the commander of the Heliopause, they say firmly. Governor Uticott was expecting Commander Morikawa. Everyone is surprised. Uticott been in communication with this ship? For how long? I am captain of the Heliopause, Lum repeats stubbornly, then adds, according to the chain of command, we uh, sustained significant loss of personnel when we went through the wormhole. You can't help but notice many of the soldiers exchange looks this time. You wonder how many people had to die before Lum became commander. As the commanding officer, Lum continues, I declare this colony to be under our protection. As such, you are all now subject to the laws of Earth. Seek vows. N now, now, they stammer. There's no need for dramatics. We're a diminished colony, as you see. Governor Uticott died in the most recent attack, after all. We're quite leaderless. Lum's eyes search the crowd, landing on your mom. She stares right back at him, as if daring him to say something. You notice Chief Engineer Instance is being held with her arms behind her back. She glowers at Lum with unbridled hatred. Lum turns to the assembled colonists. Well, why don't we fix that, he declares. Say hello to your new governor. You hear a few gasps of shock and outrage, and Lum raises his hand placatingly. Let's not pretend you don't need our help, he says, and we could simply arrest you instead. But there's no need to demoralize your little colony further. Judging from the number of guns on display, you don't think you have a choice in this. It's a good thing the colony is in such pathetic shape right now, your mom mutters under her breath. If they thought we were a threat, they'd probably just have shot us. Your dad squeezes your shoulder and tells her to be quiet. No one knows how to react. A new governor from Earth? Nearly a hundred new colonists? Most of them trained soldiers? What does this mean for the colony? The crowd disperses slowly, and the council members follow Lum back into the heliopause, presumably to talk about the future of the colony. 
you hope. You track down your friends. So what do you think of all these new people? Mars asks. I'm glad they're here to save us. I'm excited to make new friends. They're just going to boss us around or I don't want to share this planet. Um, a lot of those are actually reasonable. Uh, they're definitely going to boss us around. M Lum has made that clear. There are possibly some that would be friendly. I'm going to go with I'm glad they're here to save us because as bad as they likely are going to make things, we were basically screwed. So, like, facing another starvation situation, uh, not being ready for glow, etc. We may not like how they save us, but they will probably save us. Nem nods, her eyes on the soldiers nearby. Did you see all those guns? She says quietly. If we'd had a bunch of guns like that, it would have gone different. The entire colony, now twice as many of you, sets to work on salvaging the wreckage of the heliopause. Tearing it down and combining it with the stratospherics remaining engine section. Spirits are high, though these new colonists from the Heliopause aren't like any people you've ever met before. With their uniforms and weapons, they're more like an invading force than a rescue. You aren't sure what this means for the colony, or for your future. We move on to Late Quiet. As the dust settles, you rebuild your colony around the new ship, the Heliopause. The new arrivals, soldiers mainly, are aloof at first. Many see you as fugitives. Together, you build new walls, living quarters, greenhouses, and a massive bunkered garrison. The Stratos Engineering Wing is the only remain remainder of your colony. The only remainder of your old colony. The Heliopause brought enough rations for another five years, as well as a rich seed bank and working hydroponics. They also have more guns and explosives than you've ever seen in your life. Even the ship has guns. A full stomach, a roof over your heads, and the promise of safety convinces most strato colonists to accept the Helios. In turn, the Helios decide that you criminals pose little threat. A grudging peace is brokered between the two groups. You decide they aren't so different, really. There are even Helio children born among the stars, just like you. After a month of hard work, you and your parents move into your new quarters. You get your own room for the first time in your life. You step out onto your very own balcony to watch the new colony. Its grounds bu bustling with so many strangers and strange new ideas. You feel something rising in your chest that you haven't felt in some time. Hope. Excitement. What will the new, bra the new day bring? You'd better get out there and find out. Stress is restored. Uh... We have plus five colony defense from them, which is awesome. Rush outside to greet the day or cautiously step outside, which is kind of an amusing callback to the start when we first landed. Um, I don't remember what we chose back then, but we're going to rush outside to greet the day. We're excited. Things are looking up. 